we gave some liberals a chance to ask a little advice of their conservative colleagues. And you might be surprised where the conversations went. So Peter, what's it like being in government? Enjoy the learning curve. It is a steep one, uh, uh, whether in, in cabinet uh, or in the, in the back rows. There's an awful lot to learn about uh, uh, the difference between majority and opposition, although I must say I was, uh, I'm approaching this the other way around. Uh, I've never s served in opposition and uh, looking forward to some of the challenges uh, from that side. Uh, asking questions uh, rather than answering. Looking forward, really? I, I am with a great. Yeah, it's a it's a great time of of renewal, of reorganization, uh, of lamenting the loss of some uh, some very worthy colleagues, uh, choosing a new interim leader, choosing a a new permanent leader, and I think um, I think this is going to be a very exciting time for us on the uh, on the opposition side, even as we uh, hold your government to account. Looking forward to it. Right. Krista, as, as we sat almost exactly opposite each other in the House of Commons and, and would occasionally uh, exchange uh, grants of approval or disapproval depending on questions asked or questions answered. And, and I'm just wondering what, uh, what advice you would offer to a, an untested member of uh, Her Majesty's uh, new loyal opposition. It can be a really valuable time for a political party to think about what it really stands for and what it wants to do. Obviously, a big job of the opposition is to hold the government to account, but I think it should also be a time when you really take the opportunity of not being in government to reflect on what do you stand for? Um, what do you stand for personally and what do you and your colleagues stand for? What do you want to offer Canadians? A lot of people, uh, Christy, don't realize how much cooperation uh, and collegiality actually occurs across the aisle, uh, even at times of, of fierce disagreement. Uh, and uh, I think it's interesting uh, that you and I had an opportunity to uh, work together on one case which had a uh, quite a positive outcome. Yeah, um, so Peter and I did not choose this pairing, um, <laughs> but it's a happy accident that one of the things that is actually sort of a small, I consider a small victory uh, from my past two years in the House is a case we worked on together. So uh, nice to meet you, Marie. Nice to meet you too, Lisa. Do you have any kids? I do, I have two kids, uh, one and a half and four and a half. How do you feel about the balance that you're gonna have to go through? That's tough. I'm a bit concerned. I yeah. mean, it's it's a challenge. I'm, I'm a bit thankful my riding is in Toronto and yep. not, not the Yukon. I think I my you. travel schedule will be onerous, but not as onerous as some of my colleagues. But it's it's daunting to me, right? It's, yeah. It was tough being away from my wife and my two kids just traveling the riding, which is about eight square kilometers. It's not a big <laughs> riding. That's true. Uh, but traveling back and forth to Ottawa. And yeah. I'd love some insights from you about sort of how that how you manage that, right? Because it's it seems to be difficult. The last thing I want to do is jeopardize my family. My family means everything to me, yeah. but it's just trying to find that balance where you know, you're prioritizing your family and your constituents and your work in Ottawa and trying to also sleep in between somehow, right? Yeah, well, my advice would be this. When you go to Ottawa to work, you work. Yes. Like you just work so that you feel that you're giving it your all to your constituents. Mm -hmm. And then when you come home, you're home and you're present. And my kids were seven and four when I first took the step to Ottawa. Okay. Yours are a little bit younger. Yes. Um, but still, uh, we carry far more guilt, I would say, as parliamentarians and as young parents yes. than um, people think or expect of us. You got a big job. You're gonna have an important job in Ottawa, yeah. and you've gotta do the best of your ability, and that's what everybody worked to get you to do that, including your family. Um, so far, my kids are great. You know, They're 14 and 11 now, yes. and what I do see, if I could give you such a little bit of a glimpse into the future. My kids understand the importance of public service and the importance of empathy and listening to people and being team builders. Right. And that's a great gift. So they see that coming from their parents and their parents' friends. Yes. And they're trying to adopt it. So 
you're doing a good thing. You're actually helping your kids. Don't think you're harming yeah. them. You're helping your kids when you do and you undertake a job like this. So that's, that would be my advice. That's well, that's great. That that yeah. kind of don't beat yourself insight. up. Because I, I did notice just very tangibly sort of my my four-year-old sort of social skills interacting with volunteers, people on the campaign blossomed. So yeah. you became much less shy, much more extroverted with adults, which is great. It, it that is. was a bit of a knock-on effect with the uh, with the campaign. Yeah. But it, it's it's terrific to sort of know that they are, I mean, they're always learning and taking things in. So it's amazing to yeah. know that they're taking things but in at that level. Yeah. And, and I'm sure you show a lot of empathy and kindness to your constituents because that's the job. We have to communicate with them and have to help them as best we can. They pick up on it like that. Yeah. They see that it's better to be kind. Mm -hmm. um, you're giving your kids these tools to be able to go into their school and maybe emulate you a little bit. So you leave the work in Ottawa and you leave it at the constituency office, yes. but you do take home some of the really good things that they see, and I encourage you to take them. In my first campaign, the number one thing, that, number one, yes. by a volume and an order of magnitude I got in my office was how to style my hair on TV or in the media. And I was just wondering, like, did you get anything that sort of was, you know, because I find with politics you're trying to define your own brand yeah. too, right? and you, you're trying to figure out how you're going to make that get connection with your constituency. Was there anything that was like a challenge for you on that? Um, you know, I, I thought people were, were really wonderful. I mean, I got tons of advice, right, about everything. I had my hair up in one debate and someone afterwards said to me that I should never do that again. Mm -hmm. um, but material to the content of the debate. Yeah. Yes. So uh, yeah, forgot about anything I said. Yeah. But my hair back was yeah. uh, was not the best approach apparently. Um, but no, I uh, I took everything with a grain of salt, and you know there was yeah, you get literally everything from people all the time. Um, I got a lot of questions about my age. Sure. Which yeah. I'm sure you I did Absolutely. experienced yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, and. One thing yeah. that I found really remarkable was after uh, the first all candidates meeting that we had, I had people coming up to me and commenting on my glasses and how smart it was that I use them as an accessory. Um, how did you respond to that? Uh, I said I actually need them. <laughs> okay, well that works, right? <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much, but uh, I I actually require did you take them. Take back. Uh, it did. Yeah. yeah. It was um, it was kind of funny and actually. One of the things that when um, CBC asked if we could participate yeah. in this that I was looking forward to was talking to you about, yeah. you know, being a young woman mm. in politics. Yeah, I just, right? you know, yeah. I wish it was more, the question was more, how are you being a good politician yeah. without the, like, pre-label, you yeah. know, based on gender or age or whatnot. And I guess that's really my hope for Canadian politics in the broader sense, yeah. again, regardless of, you know, policy agenda or whatnot, that it's, uh, we can recognize that we're a yeah. country that's united through plural, pluralism and diversity and whatnot, so it shouldn't be like, you know, uh, it, it should be more about our personal journeys rather than define, but, but I think and, it's a fair question though, right? Well, and also, I mean, I think for for me, it's, it's also about demonstrating that you can be a young, successful woman yeah. in politics, right? And changing you know that that image and changing that and so I mean one of the things that you know I would you know hope that we could do together and perhaps with other you know younger people and other women is is work together and Absolutely. And, and demonstrate that yeah. right because I think that at least for me on on the day election night and the day after my inbox was flooded from young from messages from young people likewise you know saying I'm inspired. I'm excited about yeah. politics and I'm hopeful. Isn't that awesome? For the future. Yeah.